So this is my subject for my watercolour. This is New Key Harbour, a popular shell fishing uh, area. And this is just below the town. So right at the, the top here, we've got the, uh, the town. There's a steep road that leads down to the harbour. And then the harbour car park here. And then a beach. Uh, we've got three fishing boats nicely positioned there. Um, then some steps leading down to the water. Uh, there's a vehicle here. There's a figure in front. There's some things I'm going to be removing here, like these barricades here. They don't really do much for the painting, so they'll not be they'll not be in. Um, we've got some railings, um, rooftops here. And then obviously some details on the boats. Uh, so this this is a good subject for watercolor. With as I try to find in a subject bands of light and darkness as I go down from the top to the bottom. So obviously the the light sky, then the dark buildings, then light uh, su sunlight hitting some roofs there, um, some masts, tops of the boats the uh, quayside here and then the tops of the stairs that would be uh, that would be quite nice and then obviously um, from a from a painting point of view we're getting some reflections here with the boats uh, and some reflections on the right hand side this uh, solitary key wall here I don't know what it is but it sort of stands right in the middle of the harbour <laughs> it's obviously got some nets on it that nobody wants to uh, to be touched. Um, yeah, so there we are. So the paper I'm using here is Saunders Waterford. It's 300 grams or 140 pounds. It's rough texture, great for watercolour. And as I normally do, start off with the outline drawing. And I'm using a 3B pencil here, so quite soft, fairly thick. So starting from the top, the rooftops there coming down that steep road I mentioned, and the car park and then the vehicle on the left hand side. getting in that line there with the railings and then the steps leading down to the water just roughly drawn in at this stage nothing too neat now the first boat on the left hand side I think sometimes boats are very similar to cars they've got a roof this one's got a roof it's got a, a boot at the back um, if you just think of it as square shapes, yes there are a few curves in there but when you're looking at the boat from the stern or the bow um, they're, they're actually quite simple shapes and so on to the middle and the last one a bit more of a side profile with this last one Then the beach, shoreline, another little boat in there. Now we've got that key side on the left hand side, which is, as I said, it's sort of, uh, if you ever go to Newquay Harvey, there's this lump in the middle with lots of fishing nets and baskets on the uh, all piled up there and so the reflections of that of that harbour wall and the reflections just roughly the reflections where I think the boat reflections will go now a figure in front of this vehicle I think I'm going to have the vehicle lightly coloured then a darker figure in front 
then thinking about where the sun is. Nuke is on the north coast of Cornwall, so the, the sun is sort of behind the town, coming in over the rooftops and across the harbour. Then thinking about where the masts are going to go, maybe any rigging, railings on the boats, maybe bits of paraphernalia, bits of paraphernalia might go on top of the boats like radars and sonar equipment. So I think that's nearly there for the drawing. So now for the first wash and if I could just run through my palette first of all on the right hand side there. Running from the top I've got neutral tint, sometimes Payne's grey, then below that we've got burnt umber, then burnt sienna, yellow ochre, then viridian green, cobalt turquoise or cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue is the last blue, then I get into some reds, aloes and crimson, then cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange, and then right at the bottom there's a cadmium yellow or lemon yellow. So I'm just picking up some colour from my previous painting. Now you can see the papers securely held on all sides with some masking tape, just normal DIY masking tape. So starting from the top, now I've got a slight angle on this board. Excuse the slight glare there with my, there's a light right above me. Um, that will go as the, obviously as the paint dries. So I start fairly cool at the top, getting a little bit warmer, adding in a bit of yellow ochre. Plus here I'm thinking about, because some of this will be left exposed as the rooftop, so I'm thinking about what's the, what's the colour of the rooftops going to be. So we painted around the vehicle there. Now the brush I'm using is a a mop brush. It's an Escoda mop brush, size 18 I think. So the key side again, that's going to be pretty much the final colour there. So a bit warmer as we come towards us. And darker in tone. Now where I'm, those mixing areas I've got on the right hand side, generally I just get away with a couple and the one in the middle is generally, I try and keep that cooler and then the one slightly lower down, the one lower down is a warmer wash. So here is the sea going in here, then the bit of a base coat for the key side. So continuing on now with the C, that was a bit of cerulean blue added in there, bit of cobalt, just generally trying to make it a little bit darker in tone as I come towards 
the foreground. Make sure everything's well and truly mixed. And then add that on, continue the wash on down, and then bring it up in places into the wash above. And everything's still quite damp at this stage, so I can go back in. Now I'm just doing a bit of splattering on the key side there just to basically break up the monotony of that that surface. So now I'm going to be mixing a darker, thicker blue for some waves, just adding a bit of darker texture there while the so the, the, the timing here is of the essence so the first wash there is still damp and I'm mixing that darker colour there just checking how it performs if you leave this too late then don't get those soft edges and if you go in a bit too early then it it tends to form cauliflowers which is doesn't really create realistic waves sometimes you might need to on those on those dark areas you might need to go in two or three times as the paint settles and it as it dries it does get a little bit lighter so if you do want darker more solid waves you might need to go in multiple times while 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 the, the, the paper as I say it's still still damp. You can see it's just gradually as we're waiting it's gradually softening up now. I could could have I wanted to Go in again, just in some areas. Now, I was doing those ways with a similar sort of mop brush with a, a nice point, and generally with the side of the brush. This brush is a Raphael brush, Raphael mop brush, and it's natural. Hairs. So I'm just taking out and just lifting off some of the colour there just to introduce more of a highlight. So before I did that, I made sure that the the mop brush was fairly dry before lifting out. You don't want to introduce any more colour into it. You don't want to suck it out. So I'm, I think it does need a bit more. So I'm mixing in again a darker blue, thicker, and then going over those same lines. I made before. You can see I'm just lightly dragging the brush across the paper left to right and using a mop brush with a, a nice point. It's quite easy making sure you go over the masking tape there so it doesn't abruptly end with a a gap so to speak on the right hand side. Likewise being a bit careful over on the left hand side not going not going into the steps area. But it will dry 
a little bit lighter than this. It won't uh, seem so harsh after it's dried. So I think that's done on the C. Now to speed up the drying process, I sometimes use a hairdryer. This is a little tiny one here. Not too close and not too close to the masking tape, otherwise that will come off. So I want to make especially sure the top is 100% dry because that's the, the next area that I'm going to go into. Those background buildings. I've removed the sound of the hairdryer. Just uh, touching it now just to see how dry it is. So now for the background buildings, those rooftops. A fairly dark mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Still using this Raphael brush. It's got quite a nice nice edge to it. Great for doing buildings with and straight lines. a few chimney tops there. It doesn't matter if you leave little bits out. That can be where there's bits of architectural details catching the light. We're going to get down into some rooftops in a minute. And that, and that road at the bottom. So we've got the horizon there, the rooftops going up at an angle. Probably nice to have a, a bit of an angle to it rather than just a horizontal line. So I'm constantly mixing in different colours as I'm coming down. So it's not all one not all one hue, not all one colour. So you can see again there's a few little accidental bits of white, bits of uh, the, that first wash still showing through. Burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, bit of alizarin crimson. Makes for a, a dark, dark combination. Keep mixing. So we're coming down into the middle ground now with some buildings around the harbour car park. There's a lifeboat station there, shop little shop, little cafe. I think this is actually the lifeboat station building. So 
So that diagonal line going from top left to bottom right, that highlighted line, that's the, the road coming down from the town. It comes down to the right, then it does, does a sharp bend and then goes left. Bit of cadmium red in there. That's certainly going to warm things up. They're going a lot darker now. You see I brought in some neutral tint. Neutral tint. Ultramarine blue. Bird Sienna. Over to this little sharp bend in the road. As I say, the road then comes back to the left into the car park. So this is the little beach wall, little sort of wall and a slipway down to the beach. Add in a few suggestions of figures there, just some little blobs. Now, left hand side of this vehicle, this van, this white van, is the windscreen going in. Windscreens can be sometimes quite tricky to do where there's lots of reflections of things around it. There we are, the lower part of the vehicle or the van. I'm getting quite dark for the shadows now. You notice that just that little bit of light showing through on the right hand side that that right hand tire there as the sun's coming in from the right just left a little gap on the left hand side of the tire Just check how dry the sea is. Yeah, just make sure it's absolutely dry. some of the background buildings. So now onto the boats. As I say, they're, they're almost like the vehicle um, in a way. You've got that light 
light top and then the structure below a cabin some dark shadows below it and then maybe a few more highlights the side of the boat back of the boat and then the actual hull itself bring you that same color there So now for the shoreline. That's really going to as as the as I put this put the water in here, so we're going to make the tops of the boats stand out quite a bit more. Do you see with that that darker background? There's that little boat on the right hand side there in the background. Just go around that. Sorry for the glare again. So keep mixing as I'm coming down. Now, this stretch of the water here, there's a few little gaps where the light is catching some ripples. Let's do this harbour wall. It's amazing how many, with a harbour wall, how many different colours you can see in there, the greens, browns, reds, especially green with the, the algae seaweed. So I'm not going to individually paint all those baskets and rigging on top of that <laughs> key site. Deliberately kept, kept it a bit vague. So, boat reflections. Now I've used a bit of cobalt turquoise in this mix. It's quite thick and the boats, the hulls, they're, st they're still a little bit damp so this, these, this, these reflections are bleeding up upwards. Remember I've got this slope so they're going back up into that hole a little bit and then obviously as I'm coming down the reflections get weaker. So very gently from side to side. Not too precise. Sometimes the more precise you you try and do it, the less realistic it is. And resist the temptation to go back in there once you've done it leave it alone could do with being a little bit damper those those boat hulls before I went in with the reflections here so I'm just using the tip of this pointy mop brush. I could have used the side as well. So let's join things up. Now 
uh, for the reflections of the harbour wall. Starts off fairly straight and then gets more random towards the bottom. some neutral tint and burnt sienna for the uh, shadows on these steps so it doesn't have to be too uniform this is these are old really old steps here probably hundreds of years old got some darker paint going. We're going to add a bit more darkness to the waterline, the waterline of those boats. So they're still a little bit damp. It's going to bleed just a tiny bit. It's always good to have a, a darker water line for boats. Does make them a bit more realistic. Although of course if you're against the light you probably wouldn't see that. The the actual hull can be almost be the same colour as the reflection almost done in one. Bit of cadmium red here for this figure's face. Ready for the figures? So we'll start off with the face. Oops. Doesn't matter, just smudge it in there with my finger. So I'm still using this using this Raphael brush. So this dark this is the darker figure against the lighter vehicle and then the legs normally I don't uh, spend too much time on the legs and sometimes leave out little gaps in the legs as well where the light might be catching the leg or just to suggest some movement there like the that this person's right hand leg is further back then the shadow all done in one now join up because the sun's coming from the right hand side. Make sure there's too much, not too much of a highlight on the left hand side of that person's face. Now for the railings, and I'm mixing up, you, you can't actually see this, but I've got a blob of white ochre paint that's always on my palette and it's been sort of greyed down, so it's giving this sort of metallic effect. Um, always keep a little blob of white ochre there and I can mix in a grey with it, a greyish colour or blues or, or browns, just so that it's not white. I've got a, a, a medium synthetic brush here. This is again an Escoda brush. 
So these are the shadows of the railings and some little supports there. Just darken up this person's face. I like sometimes do do go back and do a a person's face again and plonk in some arms. So there's a few reds here and there. Well, I've got that same brush. Some fenders and boys and little details on the boats there. Now we're adding a little bit more detail to the boats. This is quite a dry mixture here. We're using sort of almost dry brush strokes with this medium sized synthetic brush, just adding in some details. Very often you have lines or painted lines running across the, running down the, the top of the hull. So the paint's fairly thick here. Now some mass. This is also proving quite useful to connect the foreground boats with the background. Adding a bit more form to those, the water lines there. And a few little bits of maybe black seaweed or something like that. That's another dry brush stroke. Then on the skyline there, maybe some lamp posts or flags. Not just not making that, just trying to make that top roof line not too severe. in the water. Right, I've got a, a sword brush here, a dagger brush here. A brush with really long hairs. Quite good for doing rigging or wires or ropes or in this case some reflections of those masks. Great also if you're doing foliage and twigs and that sort of thing. Quite a lot of uses for that dagger, dagger brush.
So just um, adding in some details to that background boat. So let's just make sure everything's dry now. Out with the hairdryer again, particularly where the paint was quite thick, almost applying it like gouache. Make sure it's absolutely dry before well, we're entering the, the final stage of the painting now with some highlights. And I prefer to use a very small brush and some white gouache so I'm just adding in a bit more highlights to the figure's head. Maybe the right hand side where the left hand is catching some light. And then some structural details to the tops of the boats. Maybe some masts and flagpoles that are catching the light there. And there we are. I think we're all done. So here's the finished painting. I think it worked quite well from a watercolour point of view. And I've got in those areas of light and dark in the background buildings there. And then from a composition point of view, try not to make those three boats dead centre, just slightly off that central line. And then balancing the left hand figure and car here with perhaps the boat and the the uh, the key here and this darker this darker reflection coming down there and then the reflections work quite well using that mop brush with a, a nice point to it and then those jagged lines with a rigger brush or a dagger brush and then using a little bit of white gouache for those highlights. So if you want to see more of my pictures uh, please go to my website www.timwilmot.com t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t.com but thanks very much for watching.